ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار الحمد لله we praise Allah we seek his assistance and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from our bad deeds whoever Allah guides there is none that can lead him astray and whoever is that astray then there's no guide for him i bear witness that no god has the right to be worshiped other than Allah he is alone and has no partners and i bear witness that Muhammad is the slave and his messenger O you who believe fear Allah as you ought to be feared and don't die except as Muslims. O humanity fear your Lord who has created you from a single soul and created from it its mate and scattered from them to many men and women. And fear Allah to whom you demand your mutual rights and don't cut off relations with the wombs that bore you. Indeed Allah is a raqib over you. O you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct in order that he may accept from you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved the greatest achievement amma ba'du. Certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil of affairs are newly invented matters in this deen and every newly invented matter in this deen is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is a string and every string is in the hellfire we're continuing with kitabul imama from imam an-nasa'i rahimahullah the chapter of uh, being the imam and what is with that and we're at the chapter of babu man ahaqqa bil imama chapter who has the right who has more right to be the imam and before we mention the hadith we just want to uh, emphasize for those brothers who have missed, missed last week who have missed last week's class or for the brothers who were here at last week's class that they do their best to either find out about what took place in last week's class and the people who knew to spread that among the people of the sunnah because this is a serious point where we are deficient in our understanding of the sunnah is this issue of the imam an abi mas'ud radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya ummu alqawm aqra'uhum li kitabillah fa in kanu fi alqira'ati sawa' fa aqdamuhum fi alhijra fa in kanu fi alhijra'ati sawa' فأعلمهم بالسنة فإن كانوا في السنة سواء فأقدمهم سنا ولا تأم الرجل في سلطانه ولا تقعد على تكرمته إلا أن يأذن لكم أو إلا أن يأذن لك إن ذا الحديث الأثنتي أبي مسعود أبو مسعود رضي الله عنه يسأل ذا تمسج الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سأل the one who should lead the people as the imam referring to the salah the one who should lead the people in the salah as the imam is the one who is most well read of the book of allah and if they are in their recitation equal then the one who has made hijra first and if they are equal in the time that they made hijra then the one who has more knowledge of the sunnah and if they're equal in their knowledge of the sunnah then the one who is the oldest should lead the salat and no one <coughs> should lead the salat being the imam over a person in his own domain where he's a leader of and no one should sit on a person's special chair except that he has the permission 
Here the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam shows us who has more right to lead the people in the salah, to be the imam, and that is the one who is most well read of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means the one who has memorized the most of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has the best tajweed. He knows the rules of reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one that has the best voice and his recitation of the Qur'an. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the one that should be chosen to be the imam, to lead the people in the salah. And if they're equal in their recitation, if the decision is between uh, a group of people and they're all equal in their recitation, then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the one who has made hijra first. And here we see... As the ulama of Islam explained that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing the value of hijrah in this deen and the importance of hijrah in this deen of leaving the land of the mushrikeen and going to the land of the muslimin and that this virtue of having made hijrah before the next person is a virtue that would uh, sway the argument your way when it comes to leading the people in salah and this issue of hijrah is important and we had discussed it in one of our classes in three weeks. Uh, they were the ayat of Hijra and the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah on Hijra and the statements of the ulama on Hijra and whoever wants to refer to that can, inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet wasallam says, if they were equal in their Hijra and the time that they made Hijra. And here, uh, the Messenger of Allah wasallam isn't trying to say, well, he made Hijra a day before him. And that one landed the day before him. But the people who made it around the same time. And that in Islam, inshallah ta'ala, is not nitpicking things to that degree. And we should be aware of making Islam a tight rope. So tight and so finely detailed that no one could practice Islam. This is of course in general, inshallah ta'ala. If they're equal in hijrah, they all made hijrah about the same time. He came in this month, he came in the next month, he came in a couple days after him, he came in a week after him. But basically they all came around the same time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. He says if they're equal in the time that they made hijra, then the one who is most knowledgeable of the sunnah. And here the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing the importance of the sunnah. And we have mentioned some narrations of the salaf al-salih of our righteous predecessors concerning this sunnah, showing the importance of this sunnah in Islam. As Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that the one who is most knowledgeable of the Qur'an is the one who has the most knowledge of the sunnah. Because the sunnah explains the Qur'an. And we see that in the statement, (coughs) and I forgot who was the scholar who said this, or it was said to him, I only want you to read the Qur'an to me. Meaning, don't read me the book of Hadith. I want you to read the Qur'an to me. He says, I don't want to read you other than the Qur'an. And I don't want anything other than the Qur'an. Except that I want the one who is most knowledgeable of the Qur'an. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And he's referring to the ayah in Surah Al-Nahl where Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرِ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ And we have revealed to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we have revealed to you dhikr, the dhikr, the revelation of the Qur'an. So that you could explain it to humanity. And is there anyone of humanity more knowledgeable of the Qur'an than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And this is the importance of knowing the sunnah so that we can know the details of the Qur'an. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes many issues in the Qur'an general like the salah. How will we have known that Maghrib salah is three raka'at? After the sun sets, and the first two rakats are loud, and the last rakat is silent. What ayah in the Qur'an tells us that? Allah says, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ And establish the salah, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to us how to establish the salah. And there you see the one who is most knowledgeable of the Qur'an is the one with the most knowledge of the sunnah. Because if we were to read the verse, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ and to establish the salah, and it comes in the Qur'an often, who would know them, who would understand what Allah meant more from this than the one who knows the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell the people how to establish the salah. In times of fear, it's only one raka'ah. When you're traveling, it's two raka'ah. 
uh, depending on if you're sick or if you're healthy. You might sit down. You might lay down. If you lay down, how do you make the movements with your eyes? And so on. As the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had explained in how to establish the salah. Suppose the weather is hot. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told us to delay the dhuhr a little bit until the day cools off a little bit. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made a compulsion on the men to go to the masjid and to establish the salah in jama'ah. And he also told us as a part of establishing the salah, if it's extremely cold or if it's raining and very muddy and the weather is bad outside, that the mu'adhan should tell the people, make your salah in the houses. Make your salah in the houses. How would someone know that all of this is a part of wa'aqimu salah? From the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And establish the salat Except the one who has knowledge of the sunnah Except for the one who has knowledge of the sunnah So let's uh, not find ourselves Being among the people who deny the sunnah As the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He spoke about them in a hadith That's authentic and I'll paraphrase the meaning Do not be found Reclining on your couches In luxury Saying whatever I find of the Quran I'll take it Indeed What Allah What indeed what the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has Made haram is just like what Allah made haram So the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in the other narration Indeed I have been given the Quran And that which is equivalent to it Or that which is like it Referring to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahibi wa sallam So I ask Allah not to make us among those people Who have almost left Islam If they haven't left Islam By thinking that Islam is the Quran Without the sunnah And here we see that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In a hadith That everyone accepts Even the people Who Don't accept hadith Accept this hadith As they want to say Well brother the one with the most Quran as they want to put their importance on the Qur'an. And they get it from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except that they don't want to take the rest of it. <clears throat> and uh, this is uh, what happened to the ummah who came before us. As Allah says, أَفَتُؤْمِنُوا بِبَعْضُ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضُ Or do you believe in some of the book and disbelieve in others? And other parts of the book, referring to the revelation or the deen or the Qur'an and the sunnah in general. If they're equal in the sunnah, then the one who is oldest in age. And here the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, is showing us the virtue of the people who have age. And that Allah's Messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam, have placed those people in front of the other people. So much so that he said, Laysa minna. Uh, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَيُوَكِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا وَلَمْ يَعْرِفْ لِعَلِمَنَا حَقَّهُ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم The Prophet said, He is not from among us, the one who does not show mercy on the young and respect the elders and doesn't know the right of the knowledgeable one from among us. So here the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in this authentic hadith, he's showing the importance of respecting our elders. And the young brothers from among us, we need to know that this is a part of the deen in respecting our elders. And it's not necessary <clears throat> for us all the time to be so right in the eyesight of the older brothers. As we want to, uh, I don't know, show them we know something or to do them out or whatever, but we should be respectful to our elders as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us that he is not from among us, the one who doesn't show respect to the elders. So it's not something that, oh, if I get a chance, I can be respectful from, to the elders, and if not, you know, know that you must be respectful to the elders as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us in this showing that the older person would be given that virtue of leading the Salat if they were equal in the other issues just <laughs> blessed him with his age from what he hasn't blessed anyone else with his age is this pertaining to the Muslims? Uh, no it's not permissible for the Catholics to lead us in the Salat <laughs> The hadith of the Messenger of Allah is saying us 
whoever does not show our youth mercy and respect our elders and show our knowledgeable one his due, then he's not from among us, from among the Muslims. This is in reference to the Muslims. Uh, from where? Assalamu alaikum. Are the brothers with us in Washington, inshallah? Yes, we can hear you. Allah, you better speak. <coughs> yes, so we see, inshallah, that. Even if they try to uh, the brother is asking even if they try to expose you to deviance or the elderly and they try to expose you uh, to even if the uh, yeah if they're elderly and they expose you to deviance it's the same thing as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to do with our parents to live with them bil ma'roof live with your parents in kindness and being good to them if if they command you to do some shir just don't obey them just don't obey them, but live with them in this dunya and good. Okay, the elder person, he comes to you, yeah, he listen. I don't care what nobody say, the messenger, referring to the liar, he did something for us. Okay, you just sit there. You don't have, to, I mean, you, you're not going to follow him in that. You just sit there. If he wants to listen to you, and elder people, they give us a chance at times. If he gives you a chance, you'll explain if he tell you, shut up, I don't want to hear it. Oh, okay. You're just not going to follow him in that. But we have to be respectful to our elders, and we can't use excuses to be disrespectful because there's no excuse. Every time we disrespect our elders, then we're in sin. Every time we disrespect our elders, we're in sin. We're not going to follow them into deviance or into kufr, but we're going to respect them. And all of us, we should know as we try to call our parents to Islam, May Allah guide them to Islam. We have the difficulty in calling them, but we still have to be respectful. Shut up, boy. I'm going to be quiet. I ain't leaving Islam. And I'm not ever going to say Islam isn't the truth. And I'm never going to tell her, you don't have to accept Islam if you don't want to. No, you have to accept Islam. And you have to don this deen of Islam. And if you let me talk, I'm going to call you to Islam. If you let me talk, I'm going to call you to Islam. This is what... Uh, we find in Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and do not lead a person uh, in the domain that he's in charge of. And this is all the way across the board. From a person in his house he's in charge of, a brother he may run his store, uh, wherever someone is in charge, don't lead him in salah. No matter if you're more well read than him or not. When somebody is in charge, as the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us from the etiquettes of Islam, that's the one that leads the salat. Yes. Yeah, we're going to get to that, inshallah. So the Prophet ﷺ is showing us when that one is in charge, all of the other stuff, the one who was most well read, the one who first made hijrah, the one who knows the most of the sunnah, the one who is the oldest, this don't have nothing to do with it when it comes to who's in, who house that is. He's 16 years old, don't know no Quran, whatever. That's his house. He in charge. You come in there, you half of the Quran, alim of the sunnah, made hijra the first, the oldest one, that little boy who don't know nothing, he leads the salah. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us no one is going to lead a man in his domain where he's in charge. And don't sit in his special chair. Uh, I don't know everybody doesn't have this, but some people they have a special chair. Maybe sometimes we see it with the older people. They used to have a special chair. Whenever he comes in the house, don't drink out of my cup. Don't sit in my chair. <laughs> That's my plea. Okay, those people of the household who have established that in their house. When you come in their house and you realize that's their spot, or it's told to you or whatever that that's their spot, don't sit in his spot. Let him be generous enough to you as uh, his guest to invite you to sit in my special chair, drink from my special cup, or what have you. Except, as the Prophet ﷺ goes on to say, except if he uh, gives you permission. Like we're saying, if he says, 
the Fadl, you can sit in my chair. Go ahead, please lead me in the Salat. Inshallah, bless us with your recitation. Or we like your recitation, please lead us in Salat. Then, with those exceptions, it would be permissible as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to lead it. And this is, uh, in this hadith, we have to understand this hadith as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said it. And we see that he mentions those things and then he comes down to say, don't lead a man in a place where he is in charge. And this uh, causes a lot of fitna and unfortunately it continues to happen. And I hope that we're the people, inshallah ta'ala, to stop this from happening among the Muslims. Where the people just come in and just diss anybody who's in charge and take over because they feel that they're better. And even they maybe not even be more well read or more knowledgeable just because like just because they feel they are, they just take over. Bab Takdimu the Wisin. Chapter uh, putting forward the one who uh, has the most age. عن مالك بن الحويرث رضي الله عنه قال أتيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا وابن عم لي وقال مرة وأنا وأنا وصاحب لي فقال إذا سافرتما فأذنا وقيما وليأمكما أكبركما مالك بن الحويرث Radiallahu anhu, he said, I came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a cousin of mine. And in another time, he said, with a companion of mine. And there's no uh, conflict, inshallah ta'ala, as your cousin could be your companion too. And your companion could happen to be your cousin. So he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you two travel, then make, then I command you to make the adhan and to make the iqama and to let the oldest one from among you two lead the salah. So here we see that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and this hadith is giving virtue to the age. And as Imam al-Nasai rahimahullah he's putting forth this chapter by itself. As we saw in the chapter uh, previously the virtue of the one with the age if all other things are equal to place them uh, the one with the age above. And here we see uh, by itself as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving the virtue over top of everything to the one who has the age. And this point we can't uh, overlook in this deen of Islam as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has established it for us. Uh, Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Bani Hafizahullah he's extracted from this hadith as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said I command you to make the adhan and I command you to make the iqama, and I command you to let the oldest one from among you two lead the salah. He says that the Messenger of Allah had commanded them to make the adhan and the iqama. This shows that it is compulsory for the adhan and the iqama to be made. That it is compulsory for the adhan and the iqama to be made to establish the salah. This is, of course, for the first jama'ah. Whether you're in the masjid or you're outside of the masjid, you're traveling or whatever. When you want to establish the salat, you must make the adhan and the iqama. The ulama <coughs> from among the sahaba and the tabi'een and those who come after them, uh, they have different narrations when it comes to the issue of establishing the salat after it's already been established. You come in right now, you haven't made salatul maghrib, you're going to go over there and make maghrib. They say if you make the adhan or if you make the iqama or both of them or one of them, or doesn't, or you don't make it at all, all of it's sufficient. Because the adhan and the iqama was made for that salat, and that's what counts. So if you're in another area, you're at a restaurant or whatever, you can't make it to the masjid, you're going to establish the salat, okay, you miss the jama'ah, and you miss the adhan, and you miss the iqama, at that time you have to make the adhan and the iqama to establish the salat. And the adhan is louder than the iqama. And the adhan is louder than the iqam. Chapter Babu Ijtima al Qawmi fi mawdi in hammin hamma fihi sawa. Excuse me. Bab Ijtima al Qawmi fi mawdi in hum fihi sawa. Chapter uh, The gathering of the people in an area and all of them are equal. 
عن أبي سعيد رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا كانوا ثلاثة فليأمهم أحدهم وأحقهم بالإمامة أقرأهم On the authority of uh, Abu Sa'id On the authority of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم who said If they are three Then let one of them leave the salah And the one who has more right to be the imam is the one who is most well read of the Qur'an. Here Imam al-Nasai rahimahullah, he's trying to use this narration to show that uh, if all of them are about equal and they are get together and it's time for them to establish the salah, any one of them can lead the salah. But the one who is a little better than the rest of them, he would have more right to lead the salah. And here we see, uh, as Imam al-Nasai rahimahullah, he's trying to show that if everybody's a little close to one another, or what have you, then it wouldn't make a difference to say that that one, read the, that one led the salah, and you say, no, well, he was more well-read than him, he knows two more surahs than the next one, or he memorized two more ayahs of it than the next one. If it's around the same, then it is sufficient for one of them to lead it, and it's just that the one who knows the best has more right. Meaning it would be better for him to lead the salah But if someone else led the salah It doesn't take anything against that Bab ijtima'ul qawm wa al wali Chapter the people are combining And one of them is the leader An Abi Mas'udin radiallahu anhu Qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam La ya'umur rajulu fi sultanihi Wa la yujlasu ala takrimatihi no one should lead a man uh, in salat in his domain where he's in charge and no one should sit in his special chair except by his permission here Imam al-Nasai rahimahullah he's just uh, emphasizing the point that came before and that is that the person who is in charge should lead the salat and no one should lead the salat above him showing that it doesn't make a difference uh, for the other affairs Once you have someone there Who's in charge That that person leaves the salah automatically Unless he gives permission for someone else To lead the salah And no one should go in front of that person Except with his permission Yes I don't get the question here. No. It doesn't make a difference, yeah. It doesn't make a difference. When the Prophet is saying that the oldest one should leave, it doesn't make a difference for the other affairs. It doesn't make a difference for the other affairs. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said it, and this is how Imam al Nasai Rahimahullah is going down the line to show you that uh, sometimes you have circumstances. Sometimes you have circumstances and then you just place it. Uh, the ulama, I didn't see them in the explanation going into very deep detail if it's only two or if it's a small number that that person that's older, it's clear that he should be respected and he should be placed up. And if there's a lot of people, then it's a different issue. And then you go to looking for the one who's most well-read and so on and so forth. I didn't see them bringing that. But we can see from the uh, order of Imam al-Nasai that he seems like he's uh, showing us the different circumstances. If you have a lot of people, you're going to look through all of these things to find the best one to lead the salat. If you have one that's just somebody's in charge, case closed, he's running it. If you have... Uh, three of them, all of them are companions or whatever, they hang out together, then any one of them could lead the salah. And it didn't make a difference if one knew more than the other. However, if one knew more, it would be better. And then, of course, the Prophet ﷺ is just showing if you have something, and it seems that if it's that person is just older and it's clear, he's just the oldest among them, that he should lead the salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better. باب إذا تقدم الرجل من الرعية ثم جاء الوالي هل يتأخر Chapter If a man is leading the salah 
and he's from among the people who are not in charge. And then the person who is in charge comes should the person who is not in charge who has led the salat back up to let the one who is in charge step forward to lead the salat. And he brings the hadith of Sahlan ibn Sa'idin radiallahu anhu. Uh, it's a long hadith. I'll just try, inshallah, to bring the translation. And whoever wants to refer to the Arabic, this part of Sunan al-Nasa'i has been translated into English. And you can refer to it as it has the Arabic and the English with it. Sahlan ibn Sa'idin radiallahu anhu. ibn Sa'idin radiallahu anhu. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it had come to him that Bani Amr ibn Awf uh, 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 they had some problem amongst themselves. Uh, it had come to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Bani Amr ibn Awf that they had some problems amongst themselves. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he went out in order to make up between them with the problem that they had amongst themselves. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was contained there in that area helping them make up amongst themselves as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had commanded us to do in the Malmu'minuna Akhwa Fasihu Bayna Akhwaikum Mattaqullah from Surah Al Hujarat believers the believers are only brothers so make up between your brothers. And this is good whenever we see that there's some division with the Muslims or some problems that people should be quick to jump in and to make up between the Muslims as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us. Then the time for the Salah came. So Bilal, he came to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. The situation with the Prophet sallallahu is taking place in another area. And he got held up from coming to lead the Salah because he's helping the people make up. Okay, back at the Prophet's Masjid or the normal area where the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu will come to lead the Salah Bilal and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ma they're there so Bilal he comes to Abu Bakr and he says Abu Bakr the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been held up and it's time for the Salah so why don't you lead the people in the Salah he said okay Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said to Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu okay I'll lead them in the Salah if you, if you like me to so Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu he made the iqama and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said Allahu Akbar and led the people in the salah or began leading the people in the salah and then the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he was walking through the road until he stood in his place in the road and then the people began slapping their hands together like that and Abu Bakr, he didn't look around when he made his salat. But when the people kept continuing, slapping their hands together, clapping their hands together, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he looked around to see what was up. And there was the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam motioning to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, no, go ahead, you lead us in the salat. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he raised his hand. Uh, raised his hands up and he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he backed up a little bit until he got in the line radiallahu anhu and then the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood in front of the line and led the people in the salat and when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finished the salat he said to the people ya ayyuhan nas ma lakum hina nabakum shay'un fi salati akhattum fi tasbih innama tasbih linnisa مَنْ نَابَهُ شَيْءٌ فِي صَلَاتِهِ فَلْيَقُلْ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَسْمَعُهُ أَحَدٌ حِينَ تَقُولُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا اتَّفَتَ إِلَيْهِ يَا أَبَا بَكْرٍ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَنْ تُصَلِّي لِلنَّاسِ حِينَ أَشَرْتُ إِلَيْكَ قال أبو بكر ما كان ينبغي لِبْنِي أبي قحافة أن يصلي بين يدي Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and this is authentic the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said oh humanity what is wrong with you when something happens in the salat that you start clapping clapping is for the women (coughs) 
whoever finds something in the salat that something is taking place that's uh, not correct or out of place in the salat, then let him say Subhanallah, because no one will hear Subhanallah except that he will look around to see what's going on. And Abu Bakr, what prevented you from leading the people in salat when I commanded or motioned you to lead the people in the salat? Abu Bakr said, "Radiyallahu anhu, it's not proper for the son of Abu Quhafa." To lead the salah in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa wa So here we see from this uh, story in this hadith that which Imam al Nasa'i rahimahullah is talking about in the cha- in the beginning of the chapter or the question that he's posing: If a person who is not in charge leads the salah, and the person in charge comes. Should the other person back up so that the person in charge can come and lead the salah? And here we see this example from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where Abu Bakr backed up and he let the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam lead the people in the salah. We also see some other points here in the salah. And that is that the mu'addin, uh, it is important for the mu'addin to have a nice relationship with the imam of the salah. Meaning that the mu'addin has, has to be aware of the situation of the imam. Is he going to be late? If he's on time? Where is he at? And what have you. And not that the rest of the people are going to decide, okay, it's time for salah, the imam is not here. But the mu'addin, the one who is going to be aware of the imam's whereabouts, and what he's involved in, he's going to make the decision for the people, as we saw Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who is clearly obviously aware of it, as he said, the Prophet has been held up. As he knew that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was going to handle a particular case. And obviously the time is for salah and the Prophet's not here, that in helping those people take care of their case, that he was delayed. And then <coughs> uh, we also see that it's upon the mu'addin to know the people too. To know the one who, in the absence of the imam, should be the one to lead the salat because of his knowledge of the book of Allah, the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, because of his age and his virtues among the people, so that the mu'addin could say, so and so, the imam has let me know that he's going to be late. You should leave the salat for the people where the imam, he wants to take care of something seriously. I think that uh, he probably got tied up into it. Otherwise, he would have been here by now. I tried to ring him. I didn't catch him or what have you. So here we see uh, the important position of the mu'advin. And I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he bless us with mu'advin like the mu'advin of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bilal ibn Rabah <laughs> radiallahu ta'ala anhu. <laughs> because uh, no this is serious uh, for a long time we've been trying to establish a muaddin for the salah and alhamdulillah the brothers who you hear often who call the adhan they've been doing a good job alhamdulillah and they've been on top of their job but we can see uh, every now and then for some of the salah that anyone or everyone might have to call the adhan and we remember a couple of times when I came in for the salah, waiting for the iqam, and everybody's looking around. There was no adhan. <laughs> and then the adhan has to be made. So uh, we had covered in the purification of the souls, the virtues of the mu'advin. I think it was in that series or one of the series in our classes to show the reward of the mu'advini on Yom al-Qiyamah. And the mu'advin of the Messenger of Allah, sallam, Bilal ibn Rabah, was rewarded Jannah. And that this should be an encouragement for some of the people to try to perfect the rest, uh, how to say the adhan properly and then to be mindful and knowledgeable of the times of the salah so that they can be here and be among the mu'addin to get the reward that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said for the mu'addin on Yawm al-Qiyamah. <clears throat> uh, also, we see here that... Uh, Uh, the Prophet Wasallam he said that clapping is only for women we're looking at the context of when the Prophet Wasallam said it and they had did it in Salah and the Prophet Wasallam didn't say don't 
clap in Salat. But the Prophet ﷺ said clapping is for women. And this is show in general the men shouldn't be clapping. This is from the characteristics of the women. This is from the characteristics of the women. As the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said clapping is only for women. And if someone finds something in the Salat, he should say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. In order to let the Imam know he made a mistake in something or something is happening in the masjid or whatever, turn around and find out what's going on. As we see that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam has showed us. Also in the ulama, uh, they explain uh, from this hadith that if that person who was leading the salat and the imam came and he backed up and the imam took his place and led the salat, that this is perfectly permissible and it wasn't only for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but it's also for the rest of the Ummah if it takes place and uh, this goes for the opposite way and I forgot that hadith and I wanted to mention it to the brothers if the Imam breaks his wudu or something happens and the Imam has to go and he motions for someone to leave the Salat that person should step up and continue where the Imam left off and the rest of the believers should fill the gaps in and continue making salah as if nothing happened. And this part of uh, uh, this change in the salah of the imam or this uh, little movement in the salah that there's no problem as we see that this has taken place during the time of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa wa and this is uh, for sure how we see that Islam is a real deen. And that it deals with our lives. And no one should be as foolish as to keep continuing to say, that was 1400 years ago, brother. Here we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam, they took into consideration that which takes place among the human beings. وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Maryam, and your Lord is not forgetful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware that things are going to change times, people, and what have you, and he sent you the final and complete deen to be applicable to all of those changes. And that's the deen of Islam, alhamdulillah. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is, <coughs> Now, this is another point. I have mentioned it one day, and uh, it needs to be mentioned often. And uh, sometimes, because of the aggressiveness of the brothers, I'm a little shy. <laughs> uh, mentioning this hadith from Sahih Muslim, where the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, Those people who are closest to me should be those people with the best uh, intellect. Showing those people with the most knowledge of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa And, uh, like I'm saying, I hope that the brothers take heed to this. And uh, I remember uh, when Dawood used to be the Imam, sometime I might be giving the lesson, Dawood would come in to lead the Salat, the brothers push me out of the ranks until I'm the last one. <laughs> Not that I wanted to be the one there, but this is from Islam. And that those people who we know amongst us, they have the recitation of the Qur'an. The brothers, and, and I'm not saying don't be keen to get the first row, but also be keen at not letting that brother who knows the Qur'an be behind you. Here you go, Akhi. Pull that brother up. So that if the imam makes a mistake, that brother will be right on the set to correct him. Sometimes you make a mistake, everybody shouting. And the imam, he doesn't even know what's being said. As opposed to if the brothers who have the most Qur'an, they're right there in the, in the front. The brothers in the back, they don't have to say anything. You know, just like today when I made a mistake in Surah Al-Fatiha, as uh, everybody, he's thinking in the Salat sometimes. And I'm thinking of the Salat. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ says, let one of you... Uh, who is most well read of the Quran lead the Salat and then Fatiha is saying they and the Hadith is saying you and I'm going through one thing and reading that and it came out and you see everybody's quick to recite Surah Fatiha that they know it this issue of correcting the Imam isn't to show that who knows 
the recitation of the Quran, those people who we know know it would be in the front row to correct the imam. So that's important for the people to be mindful also when they're trying to uh, catch the first row, is to know that the brothers who are more well read of the Quran, that you should give them their place in the front row. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said that those people with the most knowledge should line up behind me. Uh, there was un- one other point from the Salat, uh, from this hadith that we can benefit from, and that's where Abu Bakr raised his hand. And the ulama are showing from this we see that raising your hands in dua is from Islam. And uh, it's unfortunate that we have to say that. But we'll say it that it's raising your hands in dua is from Islam. And the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, says in the authentic hadith of Abu Dawood in Tirmidhi, Inna Rabbukum Tabarak wa Ta'ala Hayyun Kareemun Yastahyi min Abdihi Iza Rafa Yadayhi Ilayhi and Yaruddahuma Safra. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salam, says, Indeed your Lord, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, blessed and exalted is He. It's Hayyun Kareem, that he's shy and he's noble and generous. And he's very shy from his servant to have him raise his hands up to him and then turn him down empty him. And this is the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam showing us to raise our hands when we make dua to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and that this is a part of the etiquette of dua. Bab Salat al-Imam khalf rajul min ra'iyatihi Chapter the Imam making Salat behind someone who he's with An Anas bin radiyallahu anhu qala akhir salat sallaha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al qawmi salla fi thawb wahid mutawashihan khalf Abi Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Anas radiyallahu anhu he said that the very last salat that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu made with the people, Ya Alhamdulillah, he made it in a garment that he wrapped around himself. And it was behind Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And here, <coughs> Imam al-Nasai rahimahullah, he's just showing that it's permissible for the Imam to make salat behind someone else. It's permissible for the Imam to make salat behind someone else. And we also see something from this hadith, and I like to point this point out every time that we see it, that here is Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the companion of the Messenger of Allah sallam, showing us about the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. As the Prophet didn't say alayhi salatu wasalam, he didn't say, the last salat I made before I die with the people, Abu Bakr let me in the salat. As no one knows when he's going to die, as they have in the book written by Moses in the Bible, he said Moses died in such and such of a land, and no one knows where his death is. Moses wrote that book. Allahu Akbar Kabira. This is what they wrote with their own hands and attributed to the prophets, and this is our deen that we've learned from the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to show their important place in this deen and that we understand this deen from the understanding of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they was with him alayhi salatu wasalam and they narrated to us that which they saw from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah made the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam the finest example what did he do so that we can know he's the finest example. As the Prophet ﷺ, yes, he said what he said, alayhi salatu wasalam. But other things he did to show us, as we were mentioning the other day, that the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he showed the believers how to fight jihad by raising his sword high and going out to fight the disbelievers. And the companions, they used to say, when the battle got tough, we used to seek protection behind the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. How do we know that the Prophet ﷺ was that courageous? How do we know that he was leading them in the battles of jihad? That he was in front of them? Because the companions of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, they showed us what they told us, what the Prophet did. So no one should uh, underestimate in his worship of Allah ta'ala that we are in need of the understanding 
of the narrations of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who narrate to us what the Prophet والسلام, did. And we know that his sunnah is what he said and also what he did. And is there anyone who has seen what the Prophet Sallallahu did? Then how can you do what he did? Like when he tells us, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Make salat the way you see me make salat. This is the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who's seen the Prophet Sallallahu make salat so he can say, I'm making salat like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one can say he's seen him. Okay, tell me how you're going to practice that statement of the Messenger of Allah Alayhi Salatu Wasalam except that you take the narrations of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who detailed we made Salah with the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam we saw him do this we saw him do that we saw him do this Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala Ali wa sahbihi wa sallam An Aisha radiallahu anha Anna Aba Bakrin Salla bin Nasi wa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Tisafi and this is authentic where Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said that Abu Bakr he led the people in salah and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was behind him <coughs> Bab Imamat Zair chapter the visitor being the imam chapter the visitor being the imam or leading the salah an Malik ibn al-Huwayrif qala سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إذا زار أحدكم قوما فلا يصلين بهم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says if any one of you visits a group of people then do not lead them in salah. If any one of you visits a group of people then do not lead them in salah. And this is the narration of Imam al-Nasai And I wanted to bring a, a fuller <coughs> narration of this hadith As Abu Dawood and also Imam al-Tirmidhi They bring this And uh, I'm going to use this book Mishkat al-Musabih With explanation of uh, Ali al-Qari And it's called Mirqat al-Makatih And it's a valuable book Alhamdulillah uh, he brings the whole story as he says عن أبي عطية العقيلي قال كان مالك ابن الحويرف رضي الله عنه يأتينا إلى مصلانا يتحدث فحضرت الصلاة يوما قال أبو عطية فقلنا له تقدم فصلي قال لنا قدموا رجلا منكم يصلي بكم وسأحدثكم لا وسأحدثكم لما لا أصلي بكم سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من زار قوما فلا يأمهم وليأمهم رجل منهم أبو عطية الأقيلي رحمه الله سيد مالك ابن الحويرس رضي الله عنه he used to visit us in the area where we used to make salah and he used to narrate hadith to us <coughs> Uh, then one day he was there at the time of the salah so Abu Atiyah he said go in front and lead us in the salah so he said no you get someone from among the people from among you people and have him lead you all lead us in the salah and I will tell you why I won't lead you in the salah because I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say whoever visits a people then don't lead them in salah and let a man from among them lead them in the salah. And here we see that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wasallam showed even if the person is the most knowledgeable that he should let the other people lead the salah as we see that he used to visit those people in order to teach them the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam however when the time of salah came he wanted a person from among them because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Whoever visits a people, then don't lead them in salah, and let a person from among them lead them in the salah. This is what we have time to offer today. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. If there are any questions in relationship to tonight's class, we can take them now, inshallah ta'ala. And if not, <coughs> if there was... Do the brothers have any questions from Washington?
if there was any good, then it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Amen. Washington. Just a minute, Akhi. Uh, this is why I was trying to say that we should have people, first of all, that are going to be the Mu'addin, that come here on time, so that you don't have that. When you... Let's get that first down. We have to have brothers that are serious about Islam so that they can be a Mu'addin. And I encouraged the brother, and he was here, and I would have made an example of him if he would have remained, that he knows how to call the Adhan, alhamdulillah, he has a nice voice for the Adhan, and we just can't get him here to be regular enough to call the Adhan, may Allah strengthen him. This is what we need, and this is Islam. Now, if we're going to be weak and don't practice Islam, what should we do? We have to fear Allah as best we could. This is the question that you're asking. And this goes for everything. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to practice Islam and enter into Islam wholeheartedly and we don't do that, what should we do? All we can do is fear Allah best we could. Because there's nothing else we can do. Yes, sir. The brother is asking about if a visitor comes, the Prophet said, whoever visits the people, then don't lead them into Salah. He said, does this go for Jumu'ah? As we know that people are guests and they come in for Jumu'ah and they lead the Salah. Uh, the ulama, wa jazakallahu khayran, they add in the expl- explanation of this hadith that it also, that the scholars of hadith, they also understand that if they allow you and they give you permission to lead the Salah, then it's okay. Okay, you're visiting the people. And the people um, uh, force you. Akhi, please leave the salah. Jazakallah khaira. You're our guest. Alhamdulillah. We want to listen to your recitation. Please lead us in salah. You tell them I would lead you into salah. But this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, yeah, I'm aware of that hadith. But please lead us in the salah. Okay, if he gives you the permission, then the ulama, they say that there is no problem in it. The ulama, they say that there's no problem, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. Yes. Uh, the brother is saying that uh, maybe there's uh, a po- or is there a possibility that the Prophet Sallallahu is saying this because the one that's visiting, he's going to be traveling and he's going to shorten their prayer, he's going to shorten the salah, and that maybe the Prophet Sallallahu wanted to evade this, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows best. Uh, I don't know, you know, I didn't find the ulama saying that, and we see from the other examples that the Prophet والسلام, he led the people in the salah when he was traveling, and he just told the people, listen, I'm making the salah. Uh, because I'm traveling and this is the way you do it everyone who's not traveling stand back up and complete their salah for raka'at and we also know from Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he made hajj and he felt that the Muslims were large in numbers and that he made the salah when he was traveling for raka'at in order not to confuse the people who have newly embraced the Islam and this happened sometimes as I remember one day at the prison we were traveling and we led Salat al Isha. And I was trying to convince the Imam, please leave them in Salat. And I led the Salat and I was unaware. I just said, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. And everybody behind me said, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. And I say to myself, Allahu Akbar Kabira. Okay, the brothers maybe uh, just recently accepted Islam. They weren't aware of this. And that the people there who's Leading them in Salat, of course, is going to be the most knowledgeable one among them. And he should be aware of their situation in order to either tell the person, listen, 
remind the people of this point, or I haven't told the people this point, and he should leave the salat, or what have you, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, let us try to take this last question from the brothers from Washington, and then we'll have to end it for the salat, inshallah. Uh, yes, Imam, we have two questions. One is that when you were raising the hands, is the uh, second question is what establishes uh, when the, the prayer is shortened? It should have in prayer. How, what is, is, it, is it a. Okay, uh, if, if you're traveling, if you're traveling, shorten your salah. And if you're not traveling, don't shorten your salah. When are you traveling? When you say you're traveling. When you're not, and when you are, shorten it. Otherwise, make your salah as the way it's supposed to be. As there's nothing too detailed, and the best thing that the salaf have come up with is they say, if you have left the city and the houses are behind you, and maybe the best example, and Allah knows best our situation, when you hit the highway, you're on your way. You left the city. And you're on your way for your journey, shorten your salah. Anyway, each person has to look into his uh, circumstances and to see, is he traveling or not? If he is, shorten. If he's not, don't. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, your other question, Akhi? I have a question about the raising of the hands uh, when you make the du'a. Yes. It's at the conclusion of, of the salat when you make the du'a. Like for example, Sam is uh, 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 com- uh, completes the khutbah and then he's making the du'a. Yes. It's perfect to raise their hands at this time and the, and the people when they finish uh, making whatever and then they raise their hands. Okay. If you or anyone else is making du'a from the etiquette of du'a is to raise the hand. If you or anyone else is making du'a from the etiquette of Islam is to raise your hand in du'a if you want to. And if you don't, you can still make du'a without raising your hand. This is from the etiquette of Islam and it's been prescribed that we can raise our hands when we make du'a. That's each individual when he wants to make du'a. Now you're getting into some other detailed uh, issues of making dua as the particular case that you're asking about. And that particular case I've heard ulama say it's a bid'ah to raise your hands in the khutbah, during the khutbah when the imam is making dua. As the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't make dua when he, he didn't raise his hands when he made dua during the khutbah except when he made dua for rain. There are some other people that say we find no harm in raising the hands when the imam makes dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Whatever you feel that the ulama have as the strongest position, you can follow that. You are going to add to his question? Uh... Yeah, this is what the brother was asking, and this is what I was, thought I was trying to answer. Are you, the issue is, the brother is just going to repeat the question, is there a certain amount of distance? No. Is there a certain distance? No. When are you traveling? When you said you're traveling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best as uh, Allah tells us بَلِّ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا And a person knows best about his own self. If you're traveling or not, if you're trying to shortcut or shortchange Allah's deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and He's going to hold us accountable. وَصَلَّى وَسَلَّمَ بَارَكَ لَنَبِيْنَ مُحَمَّدْ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ